here! Good morning! And welcome to another episode of Hard Factor presented by Barstool News Network. It is What the Fuck Wednesday, February 12th, 2020. The lineup today is whatever you submitted to us. Thank you very much. But most importantly, Pat now has two desks and Wes still has zero desks. What the fuck? What's going on? Yeah. I wouldn't say I have two desks. I have well, you desk. have an end table. You have a desk and an end table. I may I, I fashioned this end table myself. Pat, I built it. It Pat, took me fucking hours. Pat has so much space to put shit on. I'm so gonna you, get you I'm, custom built yourself a yeah. new end table. This, well, this this is the prototype, Will. This thing would sell like hotcakes on Etsy. This we is the, <laughs> Wes has his laptop in his lap. This is the prototype. I'm telling you, it looks good. It's a, it's a very. I'm very impressed. I'm gonna make you one. So after eventually, I make everybody one. will have your. Why don't you just give it to Wes? Yeah, yeah. eventually everyone will have one. But because why don't you just give that one to Wes until we all have? Well, look one. how much stuff he's got on his tables. Yeah, he's got so much stuff laid it's out. Very convenient. You don't understand how much fucking work this took. It was like it was like it was like 15 <laughs> oh hours of fucking God. work. What are you? Spoiled brat. No, I'm not. I just, right. I, whatever, dude. First things first over here, you know what I mean? Wes is going to drop his laptop. We're going to have a 30 <laughs> second delay. I like Wes could easily spend $109 <laughs> to get an Able Life fucking side table yeah. and he won't. Wes has like some sort of like guard, like a child guard on his laptop or something. Yeah, because like, he knows he's going to drop it's it. It's a case, yeah. It's, it's a, a dad it's guard. It's an idiot case. That's it's an idiot guard case. I've never seen a fucking laptop case. It's, it's very slick. It's like Wes an outer box for a laptop. Yeah, he is. he always he always gets the warranty. When when you when Wes goes in to get, he just got a new computer. Oh, you can trick Wes into anything. One hundred percent, he's getting upsells. Yeah, I went to the car wash the other day, and they uh, they got me on the yearly subscription. Of course, yeah. that's you. <laughs> Anyone that knocks on his door gets like magazines yeah. or whatever. So Anything you want. Yeah. Well, and it looks that, like you actually need that case, though. That thing might maybe. Fall. Who I need, do. Who needs a fucking case? He left the office. He left. Well, somebody the, without a desk needs a yeah, case. Someone Pat. that can't exactly. put his I mean, laptop anywhere but between his crotch. I got slippery yeah. knees. <laughs> he left the Hard Factor house the other day because he was like, "Guys, I, I gotta go. I got a, a car wash coupon that's about to expire." <laughs> and then he <laughs> bought a yearly. <laughs> yeah. I thought that Guy was a weird me text. A yearly, yeah. as I'm sitting there like a chump. <laughs> you shouldn't have gone. I shouldn't have gone. We got a fucking full show we do yeah, we do and also speaking of that uh does what the fuck wednesday need to be longer we are going to put a poll out on twitter yeah. today because uh, you guys are submitting so many stories a lot of stories we have to like ignore half of them right it sucks there's so many so many good funny stories and this is just uh what we what we ended up falling on today but uh we will put a poll out and we may need to go longer so like i said earlier their order is pat west mark uh and then myself so pat get us going all right, yeah, for your hump day. Part of being an athlete, guys, is dealing with injury. Um, it's just part, an inevitable part of pushing your body to its limits in the pursuit of perfection. And mm. it's, not, it's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. And unfortunately, for pretty much every athlete who isn't competing in one of the big five leagues, paying for medical help that the athlete needs to recover from an injury can be a daunting, if not sometimes an impossible task. And that's why it's always heartwarming uh, when the athletic community rallies around one of their own uh, and lifts them up when they're most in need. And that's exactly what happened when dancer Janae S. Sky was competing at the Ecstasy Recital Hall in Dallas, Texas on Monday. See, uh, Janae uh, was nearing. Yeah, she was nearing the finale yeah. of her routine when she ascended a floor to ceiling <laughs> pole positioned in the middle of the stage. Um, and that's when she inverted her body. For her big gyrating finish, uh, just like she'd done eight times earlier that evening, when something went very wrong. She lost her grip and she fell from the Ginia sky, dropping 15 feet and landing directly on her face. Yeah, I was laughing because I'd seen the video. It yeah. Looked, yeah, it looked yeah, like yeah. it was like 10 to 12 feet. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are saying 15, Mark. <laughs> so, uh, she bounced uh, a little bit when 16. she landed. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, Will, the, the, the thing is, when she landed, she bounced right back up got on all fours and went right into a, a twerk routine. She did like a, a bounce <laughs> and then a heel a heel click. It was pretty impressive. Guys, this is a fall that would have easily caused a less tough dancer to forfeit, but not Jania. She she just she kept going. She was like Carrie Strug out there, uh, and which is really valiant. I mean, how many days would you be down if you fell 15 feet right now? I wouldn't uh, pop into a doggy style twerk like that. No, no, it would it's be one a, of those. Yeah. It'd be a moan. It's one of those I'd, falls that makes you think that you're like dead or something, like a jarring head to concrete kind. I of think fall. I'd have to sit down for like 20 minutes. She yeah. fell almost two stories from the top of the pole, <laughs> uh, and she fractured her jaw, guys. She oh. broke a bunch of teeth and she sprained her ankle. What? Yeah, wait. It's bad. So she, are you for real that she was popping and locking right after? Or no, wait, no. Immediately after, she finished the routine. Uh, went right into all fours and did a twerk. It was really, it was really Absolute impressive. Pro, yeah. really, really pro. Uh, guys, 
the whole thing will was you might not watch the whole video because at the end, it, you know, that's where she popped into the twerk. It was it was caught on video and it was posted on Twitter, which went very, very viral. And that turned out to be a godsend for this athlete because it turned out that Jania's injuries were so bad that they required surgery that would cost almost twenty thousand dollars. And the theater where she was employed doesn't cover medical expenses. So, you know, that's where the athletic community stepped up, launching a GoFundMe off the back of the viral video, far surpassing the $20,000 goal. Uh, and at the time of this taping, the total raised was like 34000 from a compassionate group of individuals that seem very highly motivated to get Jania back to her sport as soon as humanly possible. God damn. How many of them were guys? Uh, well... <laughs> It's funny you should ask that, Mark, because let's take it to the Internet for some of the comments on Jania's GoFundMe yeah. page. Yeah, let's hear the donation. Wes, Wes Stephenson, who donated five dollars, says, hope all is well. If you ever in Wichita, look me up. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Gray donated fifty dollars and he says exotic dancers have a special place in my heart. Right, and his crotch. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. And then Gerson Manija says, uh, "Mamba mentality. Most of those broads would have started crying, but not you, Queen." Reminded me of when Kobe hit those two free throws after tearing his Achilles. Heal up, Queen. All you goofy hoes, call out because you're hungry, but you better step it up. God damn it. <laughs> she set the bar. Yeah. She's the Kobe of strippers. No, she's a stripper. I don't know if you guys got that, but no, the poor girl. It. We tried yeah. to reach out to her to get on the show today. I was a little bit upset she didn't respond, but she was in surgery. Uh, she posted a, a photo to her on Instagram she's afterwards. She's getting surgery on her jaw, like, though, uh, which is very painful, but she doesn't really need her jaw to perform. No, she'll be back out on the court yeah. before before you know it. Okay. This is depressing because now a stripper that fell off a pole is worth more than I am. So that's yeah, little, one fall, well, one like, fall. She, a bit she was before thirty-four thousand. I'll tell yeah. you what: if you climb a pole fifteen feet and fall, we'll start a GoFundMe for you. Wes, yeah. you you, yeah. you, have, you have you have to have thirty-four thousand dollars worth of shit laying around. Oh, I'm sure I do. Easily. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. <laughs> I, I went to go, not desks. I went to go yeah. give no, not desks. <laughs> I went to go give to Janae's GoFundMe, and uh, the auto login was the hard factor news login for our GoFundMe. And I got in there, and I was like, oh yeah, we tried to send Wes to Sex for Island. Wes. Remember that? Yeah. I do remember that. Didn't happen. I was Sex very excited. Island, as you can see in our set. Maybe next year. Yeah. Wes, what's up? All right, guys. Uh, it's always 6 9. Sorry. It's always 6 9 at West Island. 6 yeah. 9. That's it. That's Island. Island. All right, guys. This first one comes from Colton Phillip. Thanks for the Wall Street Journal link, Colton. Please send your login when you get a chance so we can access those. <laughs> um, so, boys, as the coronavirus spreads, the less fortunate who do not have access to medicine and hospitals have no choice but to turn to home remedies to fight the deadly virus. Okay. And hopefully if you're stuck on that cruise ship watching your free porn, which we will get to later, mm. uh, you take heed of these uh, medical miracles. Uh, first, one famed pulmonologist, Zong Nan Shan, who uh, tackled the SARS outbreak back in the day, says that swishing warm salt water around in your mouth and throat will fight off the infection. Um, and this is something my grandma tortured me with as a child when she would take care yeah, of me. It's like a normal thing, right? For Yeah. yeah. Well, and guess other. what? Just as I suspected when I was six, it doesn't do shit except make you <laughs> resent your grandma. What? No proof whatsoever that this fights infection, That's true. according to the World Health Organization. Um, second, the Koreans are recommending a fermented cabbage called kimchi to cure the virus. That's what they, that's that's because that's their main fucking export. They're just well, trying to drive drive the kimchi market. Kimchi is yeah. delicious. Yeah. I would I, like some right now. I actually have some kimchi in my fridge right now, but the mm. only thing it cures is uh, fresh breath and normal shits. That's like so. us, that's like it's like American <laughs> doctors recommending hamburger helper to right. treat to treat uh, a disease not in this country. Yeah, um, they say eating this cabbage could boost your immunity, but it could also help spread the virus. So what? No luck there. <laughs> Pick your poison. Yeah. Just a lot of bad advice going on. That's outside. big kimchi, it's man. Like roll, rolling the fucking roulette wheel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, anything. Um, and the champion for worst um, idea and absolutely no chance of curing the virus comes from India, where Swami Chakarpani Maharaj, president of the Hindu Meshaba, um, in, which is an Indian political party, recommended consuming cow shit and piss in addition to performing some special Hindu ritual in front of a fire. And the only way that will kill the virus is if you fall into the fire and burn to death. Um, so... I guess if you are dying and poor, you will try just about anything, and hope is a powerful I think that medicine guy's, I think in that itself. That guy's pranking them. You think he's what? pranking them? I bet he owns a jet. You think? Yeah, yeah. I think that. I think he's he's got a bone to pick. Well, in Hinduism, cows are a, a sacred animal. You don't eat them. You don't. You Except don't. Except for their. But I guess you you eat their shit. Wouldn't was you just wait for like the medicine? Just like try to be healthy and then wait. wait was it for in, the medicine? Was it India or Indonesia? India. India. Okay. 
India. Right. Yeah. They wow. want you to eat cow shit. And I want to check in with Joaquin on that one. That's going to make you yeah. worse. Definitely. It's going to it's going to make you worse. It's going to. Yeah. yeah. Joaquin doesn't want you to touch. It's going to get some stuff out of your body, but it's not going to get the coronavirus out. All right. And now moving on to those who are uh, just got a lot more fortunate. Thanks to the mm-hmm. submission by that seller's boy. The Diamond Princess passengers just got free porn, guys. What? Ooh. Yeah. And that will give you some fucking hope that everything is going to be OK. So now I'm staying on the ship. Right. Exactly. This doesn't make sense because they need their strength. Why would you put something that's going to tire them out when well, they need their strength to fight? The no, virus? no, no. That's got that's a stress reliever. Yeah. You got to have as many stress relievers on there as yeah, possible. Do you know how small the interior rooms of a cruise yeah. ship are that you're only allowed to walk outdoors with people in masks for like 10 minutes at a, at a day are. Yeah. You need you need to relieve some Getting stress. Getting some stir crazy. So the adult site Cam Soda is giving ev- every passenger on the stricken ship access to their site. And it's Cam Girls. Oh, that's a that's Damn. a real bonus. Live, yeah. ac- live action. Yeah. What? So uh, so now you can get a divorce on the and the coronavirus all at the same time. <laughs> And I'm oh, sure man. the women on the ship are just happy as flies on shit about this one, just waking up to their husbands, watching Miss Sucks a lot, slurping on a dildo and fingering herself, while their main concern is if they're going to ever see their kids again. Is there um, dudes on the cams, though? Can they? No, can just they... just women. Only women. It, it, it's just women on the cams. So Wait, this it... is strictly for the men on the ship. Not very progressive um, over in Japan. Yeah, just when you thought yeah. your day couldn't get worse as a cam girl. Your your pipe for your free, pipe yeah, into for the free. Into a, into like a marriage fight. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're demanded you got some guy to typing do it how scared for free. He is. He's yeah. like, "Can you quiet down? My wife's asleep." <laughs> yeah. She's like, hey, "What?" <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so Dana Parker, the CEO of Cam Soda, said, "Quote: They are not only dealing with the fear of infection, which is terrifying, but boredom." Uh, we like cruises just as much as the next guy, but without activities or human interaction, the boredom must be crippling. In an effort to keep their minds off the coronavirus and to help with the boredom, we're offering passengers and crews the ability to have fun in a safe and controlled environment with camming. So, I mean, yeah, I, I like okay. it. Yeah. Why not? There's worse things that have happened. No, I, think it's, I, I, yeah, it's I think it's a nice oh. gesture. Way to step I think up they should girls. go equal rights, though, and they need I, to have yeah, some options for everybody. Sure, I, but, I agree yeah. with you, Will, but I mean, this is a lot better than the uh, better than, cruise, than the cruise director's well, TV show that he offered. <laughs> well, <laughs> him, and his, him and his mansion on the ship. The thing is, Will, I agree with you in theory, but it's really not necessary because they can just go on chat roulette. And find dudes jerking off into camera. Is that still a thing? It's still a thing. So they have access to the other porn sites. This is just a, a paid one it's, normally. Yes. It's free yeah, it's just it's, it's a, premium a premium service. premium that they're getting for free. They can interact with the girls. Because, yeah. of, mm. because of the publicity. Probably not tip them, though. Yeah. All right, guys. This one's from at Matt Kobe. Uh, when now 60-year-old Lawrence Ray was released from a New Jersey prison stint back in 2010, he leaned on his daughter to get back on his feet. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 The thing is, she was attending the elite New York College, Sarah Lawrence, confusing as the school's last name is the uh, father's first name. But um, she was living in the dorms. So guess what? Ray moved in with her in the dorms. OK, that's a bad idea. Yeah, that's that. That's not Sarah Lawrence behavior. Who's the sexy old guy? He looks dangerous. <laughs> that's my dad. He just got out of the clink and he sleeps on the beanbag. Why is he always carrying a knife? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, he smells like cigarettes and carries yeah. a gun. <laughs> He's always leering at me. <laughs> yeah, not great for the dorms. Why right? is he collecting my hair? <laughs> He's got to go against a few of the rules. Uh, right away, Ray began manipulating his daughter's friends in cult leader-like fashion, preaching about his personal philosophy and conducting therapy sessions as a father figure. Uh, mm. Once he had conned enough money from the rich teenagers, he was able to afford his own <laughs> Manhattan apartment. And he kept the therapy sessions going there. Oh yeah! Can you He's imagine got- your, your your daughter's there and she calls home and you're like, "Who's there? What what's happening?" It's Ray. Ray, yeah. who's Ray? <laughs> Dr. Ray's house <laughs> for my he, like, for my night long session. <laughs> Yeah. This guy's such a fucking genius, <laughs> yeah. though, because he's ex- wow. he's exploiting liberal arts colleges. I mean, he's absolutely a piece of shit, shit. But yeah, I mean, yeah. like, but this yeah, is a good grift. He's a you pe- got to applaud applaud the guy. Well, no, like he, he's no, he's, 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 he's an asshole. He's a complete piece of shit. He's, he's, a, he's a dickhead. He's paying but for I, the tuition. Well, Pat, maybe you want to listen to the rest of the story. Uh, during the therapy <laughs> sessions, Ray obtained intimate details about the students' private lives, their deepest, darkest secrets, and their mental health struggles, which he eventually used as a weapon. Uh, his plan. All along, even though he obtained them under the guise of being a therapist. Right. Uh, he convinced go. several of the victims that they were broken and in need of fixing, and that he, the father figure, and that his penis was the fixer. Yeah, the, yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ray, oh, Ray got the glue. It's a another, classic grift that Ray is, is performing. Uh, he's a grifter. <laughs> uh, yeah. And another weird twist of the story Ray allegedly would continuously extract false confessions from the students. 
uh, and record their confessions on video and in journals so that it would keep them silent and from like going to the police. Wow. He's he, like that, he's the, a, vex, the victim or yeah. the, that cult leader guy. Yeah. That, that's what they would do. Yeah. 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 Next yeah. Next cult leader. Yeah. 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 He learned from the best. I'm sure he read some books in jail. Jesus. He would make them confess to things like committing vandalism against his home and family members of his homes. Nice. Uh, and and he, he made them confess to poisoning him and some of his family members. He used sleep deprivation, sexual humiliation slash blackmail in the form of holding explicit pictures over their heads that he had taken while he'd sleep deprived them and, and, and was like manipulating them. He right. also used verbal abuse and physical abuse sometimes in the form of a knife. I knew it. He had at least seven false weird confessions on hand just in case any of the students stepped out of line. Yeah. He also allegedly pimped out at least one of the students who had to pay him back for a fake debt he held over her head that he said she owed him, which he didn't. She allegedly earned more than 500000 over four years for Ray. So, wow, I can't afford a prostitute in New York. This guy's pulling out all the tricks. 500 k. Yeah. He's like yeah. a he, he's like a jack of all trades when it comes to cons. He, he's yeah. he's he's borrowing from here. He's borrowing from there. He's yeah, he bringing are, the cult leader mentality. He's, a, he's, he's a very good con man. Yeah, wow, he's really How'd breaking bad. Uh, well, uh, eventually he got caught because they just. They just they got confessions, like, eventually. But if any of the students did make a mistake, though, or went against, like, his teachings, he accused them of what he called sabotage. And what's the crime for sabotage, you might ask? A shanking. Well, cruel physical and emotional punishment, of course. <laughs> Here's a list of some of the things he allegedly did to the students. He shoved a woman by the face and the neck onto the ground in front of people. He put a plastic bag over another woman's head until she basically passed out. He oh. held a knife to a man's neck until he confessed to something he didn't do, and he choked a man unconscious completely unconscious so he pretty much treated these uh these uh waspy uh, upper crust liberal arts girls like 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 fellow and prisoners men. And, and men, men. And, and, that's and insane that the, the men were well, had this FBI, done to them fbi got onto it uh, ray faces nine federal charges in total including sex trafficking ex extortion forced labor um just the whole gauntlet laundering uh, over a million dollars from five different victims under the <laughs> yeah, guise of self-help just being just being an asshole yeah it's and, incredible the word didn't get out quicker about ray yeah yeah well he had those fake confessions well, he's smart i hope ray took a writing class at sarah lawrence because i would love to read this book oh god it's gonna be you dark. know no you're you're yeah. not allowed to why read you... ray's teachings Pat. <laughs> why is this guy here? That, that is uh, a bad idea for you no ray's ray's a bad dude there's yeah. no doubt about it but oh sure man. yeah yeah and then with the caveat of i want to be just like ray and find I out how to do no, <laughs> Pat, this is how bad the guy is. Ray be Ray. William Sweeney Jr., it. William Sweeney Jr., who's the assistant director in charge of the FBI in New York, said, and I quote, if you're not angry at this guy, you don't have a soul. Uh, Ray was once a close friend of ex-New York police commissioner Bernie Carrick, and he played a uh, basically the main role in that top cop's prosecution in getting him like uh, removed. And he also previously acted as an FBI informant. So this guy probably could write a book. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. A yeah. full life. That would be a crazy story. But uh, I still say that that would be dangerous if Pat it's like, was. Because, like, catch me if you can. The if Pat was to learn all of Ray's tricks, he'd be, he'd be a formidable, formidable yeah. force. He wants to there. take all those tricks to the <laughs> compound that he has where everyone lives. Exactly. The commune. He'd start, the cult would begin. All right. Uh, let's, let's move it over to one that's brought to us from uh, Dennis McElhone. McElhone? Yeah, thank home. you, Dennis. Mac no, no. Home? Probably. Mac. Mac. D Mac. Yeah. All right. Well, it uh, turns out the Orthodox Christian Church in Russia is mulling over new rules that would prevent them from their current practice of blessing nuclear warheads and other weapons of mass destruction uh, that would then go forth and kill the masses in the name of Russian Jesus, I guess. I think that's how, <laughs> how that are they works. Gonna, how are these missiles going to strike, tr strike true without the blessings, though? Exactly. Yeah. So they got to be blessed. Every yeah. weapon, every gun, every you know uh, missile, whatever, whatever else. Uh, the church says, "quote The blessings of military weapons is not reflected in the tradition of the Orthodox Church, and does not correspond to the content of the rite." Uh, unquote. And that's uh, what the Moscow's Patriarchs website says. Uh, and so the proposal that they're discussing is going to be discussed until June 1st, which is a really long time to discuss whether or not to stop blessing. So many more blessings. <laughs> yeah. But why, Will? It yeah. seems like it's an effect, you know, an instrument of God is probably more effective than 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 not, right? It's I, also it's also quite the scene. Have you seen these guys in the big hats no. throwing holy water at <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they're just they're getting <laughs> the into chains. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steam yeah. steaming up the yeah. nuclear weapons. <laughs> What's that? You got you got you got to wonder how Putin uh, like <laughs> 
<laughs> it draws a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to wonder how Putin's going to feel about losing his priests who, like you said, like go, go fucking nuts showering guns with holy water. And uh, like they, they walk around like they're guys like walking the watching the undertaker like come into a WWE Monday Night Raw. And then they're like tossing the holy water yeah. and they got like the smoke, the smoke and the thing. Yeah. So it's, it's good. Um, anyway, it's going away in June. <laughs> huh? That's going to go away in June. There's no, <laughs> no way, they, but they there's no way they vote this They're in. That's what I'm saying. Putin's going to have some part to play, right? Can't, can't he say to them, like, don't take it away? Uh, he has any, to, from now till June to say, like, hey, maybe why would you? around. Anyone that votes against this is going to get killed. <laughs> <laughs> Are they paying these guys too much? Is that what's going on? Oh, I mean, maybe. it is the church. It is the church that Putin has mostly, uh, like, been associated with his, his you know, during his, his reign. It's so. a worthwhile expense, if you ask me. The yeah. blessings the blessings continue. I, I would think I would think he's gonna want to keep those around. And another yeah. thing that you might want to keep around is your relationship. And ah. guess what, buddy? You better get those fingers clicking their way over to one eight hundred flowers dot com right now if you want to get that special someone flowers in time for Valentine's Day. That is this Friday, okay? Valentine's Day displays are out there in full force. Drugstores, supermarkets, gas stations, all promising they have the best deals on roses. I can tell you from experience that they're nowhere near the quality or the beauty of the roses from 1-800-Flowers. Valentine's Day is here, and you need a rose bouquet that's guaranteed to impress. Right now, 1-800-Flowers has amazing offers on beautiful Valentine's bouquets and arrangements. There's still time to have your bouquet delivered on Valentine's Day, but you've got to get moving now with an amazing selection of sweets, treats, and bouquets. 1-800-Flowers has everything you need for Valentine's, and she'll never guess how great of a last-minute deal you scored. Time is running out to lock in these Valentine's Day offers, so order today only while supplies last, and you've, uh, <clears throat> and you've chosen your gorgeous bouquet arrangement. Simply pick your delivery date and let 1-800-Flowers handle the rest. When it comes to impressing her on Valentine's, trust the Rose Authority, 1-800-Flowers.com. To order beautiful and vibrant Valentine's bouquets, go to 1-800-Flowers.com. Click the radio icon and enter code HARDFACTOR, all one word. Valentine's Day is here. Order today. Save at 1-800-Flowers.com. Radio icon, code hard factor, all one word. Hell yeah. All right, guys, the 35th home gas station is in jeopardy of losing its license after it was held hostage by an amateur pornography actor, Frederick Allen, to have sex with a large bottomed female in the candy aisle while the pair filmed the whole thing. They then uploaded this video to Pornhub. Uh, Alan did, I guess, under his handle, Fella the Turnup Monster, Mm. where his biography lists him at an impressive 9 to 10 inches, and his turn-ons include being able to fill up two tanks simultaneously. Jesus, 9 to 10 inches. I know, it's pretty impressive, right? (laughs) Two tanks. What do you think about that one? That's ridiculous. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Wait, how is he filling up two tanks? Well, one, one is his gas tank, Will. What? I don't get it. He's he's banging a chick in a uh, gas in station. a gas station oh, convenience store. Oh, I thought you meant like he had two dicks. No, bro. I, what? Uh, his car is getting filled up with gas, uh-huh. so he can hold something while he fucks somebody. Oh my God, Will! It was no. a, it was well written <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, the video has been mute more than 700,000 times and was <laughs> discovered accidentally by a local resident who reported it to Milwaukee city, city officials. That's my gas station. <laughs> I don't know how I found it. I just happened upon it. I know that candy aisle. Yeah. I was <laughs> my kids are, my kids go down that aisle. Anyway, guys, District 7 Alderman uh, Khalif Rainey uh, has already begun the process of revoking the business's license, uh, saying of the incident, under my watch, I won't allow it. Keep in mind, it was right next to the chips and across from the sunflower seeds. Yeah, well, if this guy's on the loose, he's going to have to shut down every business in town. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy's a pro. Uh, a ton of videos he's made. Yeah, uh, with a roof. They, yeah, they got to enact martial law to set a curfew <laughs> with this guy around. Guys, the straw that broke the camel's back for Rainey uh, was the fact that the owner of the gas station, uh, Kowant Dillon, could be seen in the background of the video filming the lovemaking on his phone while staring with a blank expression from behind bulletproof glass. Yeah, <laughs> he loved it. He yeah. was just fucking watching. What are you going to do? You're going to like 
get out there and tell him to go? No. Well, he had the he had there's he had double cameras because there was a camera in the gas station. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to get all the angles. He like cuts he cuts it. <laughs> Mark, together. you're in the production business. <laughs> yeah, you you yeah, know you true. need multiple <laughs> angles for a good a, cut he cuts down. Cuts the angles together. <laughs> Who can I send this to? I think if I own this store, I might stop it. But I don't know. During a license hearing last summer, Dylan said that he was too afraid and probably overcome with horniness to call the police, saying that the porn star Alan threatened to shoot him and burn down the gas yeah. station if he did. That's right, a lie. Look, all right, what are you going to do? You're going to film the porno or you're going to like go out there and stop him from like stealing some fucking chips? No. Yeah. You're just going to stay in your box and by film his him. cock. Well, you got to watch the video cuz it's fucking awesome because you can see the owner in the back <laughs> get beaten to death and in the first wiener. In the first frame he's not there and then throughout the video you just see him kind of peek out a little bit and then peek back cuz he wanted deniability. Uh, he's like he is 10 inches. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> I need bigger glass. <laughs> Every word of it is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's take it to the internet real quick. Where New Age Art comments on the video on Pornhub, bruh, not by the sunflower seeds. <laughs> oh, oh, good gosh. one. Oh. All, right. All right, guys. Uh, this next one comes from Barstool Loyola Marymount. Uh, thanks, boys. So, guys, Valentine's Day isn't a happy holiday for some. Even if you're in a relationship, it can be, well, it can be a chore, even though 100 flowers makes it much less of a chore. Oh, yeah. But if you are recently broken up with your significant other, it can be downright depressing. But don't crack that whiskey bottle just yet. The San Antonio Zoo, where my son was once bitten to blood by a bird in the birds fly free exhibit. Uh, bitten by, to blood by a bird? Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds, you didn't sounds get sounds awful. Bitten to blood. <laughs> you're you're talking about that was sounds like a Jurassic Park scene. You didn't sue, Wes? Uh, yeah. that, that was your stripper moment. I, I had to call around and make blood. sure none of the, all the birds were tested <laughs> and shit. Was, well, what Wes, was that was your fall from the it pole. Was ridiculous. <laughs> you're right. I should have kind of bird was I this? it was like just a little fucking starling or something. They fly around, they land on you, one bit them. <laughs> um, this is terrible. Um, anyway, for just five bucks at this zoo, they're holding an event. For just five bucks, you can name a cockroach after your ex lover and then watch that cockroach be fed to a hungry animal. Oh. And if you're a complete psychopath, you can pay $20 and have a rat named after your ex and Ooh. watch it be gobbled down by a snake. Hard times at the San Antonio Zoo, and, it sounds like. Yeah, and for $1,000, you can pay the zoo director to hit, put out a hit <laughs> on her. <laughs> yeah, her ex. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. There's no way this isn't seems, inspi this seems fucked up. inspiring it's, domestic violence. Yeah. It's fucked up. The best part is you don't even have to go to the zoo to watch as the organizers plan to stream the, the gathering of Oh, you of can watch hearts. it. Like, you could yeah. just get hammered at home and be like, yeah. all right, give, give me another rat named Rhonda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a hundred. Here's another rats. twenty. Yeah, loaded yeah. up. Yeah, that, that, this has to be like a fucking crime. Because like, if you send Rhonda that video of the rat with her namesake getting eaten by a snake, like that's that's a threat, man. Yeah, uh, you're getting a restraining order. They yeah, get, you, they get Rhonda yeah. to go in the birdcage. If Rhonda's yeah, yeah. dad's a a around, he's gonna be paying you a fucking visit. Yeah, yeah. no, you watch it at home with your, all your voodoo dolls dressed in torn clothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're getting, your ex you're, you you're, said you're, you couldn't find. It's not fun for the person doing it. They're they're having a bad time too. This bringing is up bad come stuff. back to bite them in the ass. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and if you really want to get crossed off the list of uh, every human as a potential future partner, the zoo will give you a certificate. You can post to social media and tag that special someone that ruined your life, and at the same time get yourself, like we said, that's amazing. There's a really, <laughs> really hurt zookeeper running the San Antonio yeah, Zoo. Yeah, no, yes, he's very, <laughs> very. He's either got a, a ter trauma. terminal case or something, or he's ready to quit. <laughs> Just a yeah. deeply disturbed <laughs> he man. Well, would, you, would you guys <laughs> go with the cockroach? I feel like I'd have to go with the rat. cockroach. No, cockroach. The rat. Four Four cockroaches. I wouldn't want fucking go with any of it. Well, I, I, I don't want to go to jail and I want to get laid again at some point right. in my life. Well, I mean, you're not going to go to jail for this. You send a fucking video of an animal getting eaten by another animal that you named after your ex-girlfriend. You're the going to zoo jail. is offering it as a paid promotion. So I don't this think you're going to go to jail. This lasts one more day. You're making every list, every bad list possible. <laughs> I think you're it might, the first I, suspect. I think it might be like an FBI phishing <laughs> yeah, you, phishing scam that if you post like this, card. you automatically get on a list. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the reason we uh, came to talk to you is because we saw this video you yeah. posted. There's a certificate. Uh, uh, you named a rat you paid, after your you paid uh, for ex. It? We're Call, we're calling the zoo tomorrow. Yeah, we right. got, let's set up some fake. We well, we yeah, got to. You got to hurry because uh, the last day to submit a name is February thirteenth. So tomorrow. Let's so if do you, this tomorrow. If you want to act <laughs> yeah, on this, get, get your names in now. First names only, but you can get creative and you know jumble the last name and the first name Dad. maybe and get away with it. <laughs> oh. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
I mean, you see that, Dad? We should try this. We should try. Let's let's, let's try to combine a first and last name of like someone and see if they do fake names like Cecilia lips around my dick or like just like like joke names. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, Amanda. Yeah, or maybe an actual real life ex of ours. Oh wow. Okay, Pat. Let's move on. All right. I thought you said you didn't want to do this. We all know Pat's history. Uh, This one's from (laughs) at Jack Jock and Cannon, a Massachusetts man attempting to save his neighbor from a dog attack last week. Uh, and it di- things didn't go as planned. What kind of dog was it? Police from Adams, Massachusetts, received several 911 calls last Wednesday afternoon <laughs> for a reported mauling in progress. Uh, it was a two-dog on human mauling. Uh-oh. Mm. They teamed what? up. Yeah. The, I- the identi- <laughs> What Shut breed up, were they? <laughs> <laughs> the unidentified neighbor who was described as a good Samaritan by the DA's office was one of the several people that heard the mauling coming from his neighbor's apartment, and like any good Samaritan would do, he rushed over to help. First, he grabbed his crossbow, which he is a friggin' whiz with, and headed next door where he took aim at one of the dogs. No. That was doing the mauling from before, outside the apartment. Before saying to himself, I've been waiting for this. I don't want to exactly. say what breed the dog was. Well, I think that, we all know, don't we? It was article, a pit bull, wasn't it? It was a pit bull. Okay, so, two, two so, let's, so why is his first instinct to grab a crossbow to, to resolve this problem? Because he's like a dead shot with the crossbow. Yeah, well, have you ever owned a crossbow? <laughs> no. You know why? Because no. you're not a fucking dead shot with a crossbow. If you have a crossbow, it's the first thing you're going for. It's why you have it. Apparently, the bolt struck one of the dogs. Then ricocheted off and went through the half-open door and struck the 27-year-old neighbor, oh. Joshua Jada Singh, uh, who was attempting to barricade himself uh, inside the house from the attack, and it killed him. Yeah, I don't maybe. buy that. Yeah. Quicker death yeah. than what would have happened. So that was, that, there was a second shot. I guarantee it. Officers arriving. I mean, you can tell how many bolts were shot. Officers arriving. Yeah, you, you just pick yes. one up. Right. You well, one up. Oh, yeah, you're going you're gonna to go, in, go into the t- pit bull den and pick one up? I don't fucking think so. <laughs> yeah, they're probably pretty fucking afraid of you. No, no, they're no, afraid no, of you. No, they're, they're not. No, no, Pat, they're not. Because if you let me finish, <laughs> officers had to arrive on the scene and shoot the dogs with their service weapons because the dogs, the one dog survived the bolt, the first bolt, and the other one didn't get hit by it. So the two pit bulls then attacked the do- the cops or like yeah. after the cops. So this right. guy just shot his neighbor. He didn't even. I doubt he fucking even made Correct, contact with Pat, people. Yes, yes, that's my point. I feel like the, the, this is being all like the, the the instinct to grab the crossbow was bad. The guy, if anything, should have grabbed like a knife or a handgun, not a crossbow. To, to uh, deal with this situation. I mean, well, a handgun would have been better, yeah. He did the dog's yeah. job for him. One of the dogs named Max previously attacked someone in the same home in 2018, and District Attorney Andrea Harrington said it is believed that the dogs were owned by the deceased and his partner and that charges are not expected to be filed against the man who is deadly accurate with a crossbow. Oh, you, he- know who el- you know who else is deadly accurate? Me with predicted bets. Ooh. I've hit like 13 in a row. Was that too insensitive? <laughs> no, <laughs> that was good. I was smooth. That was a smooth. I was, I was ooing your smoothness. Yeah. Well, what you yeah. need to do is go to www.predicted.org slash promo slash hard factor 20 right fucking now and create an account in like two minutes total, totally legal in all 50 states and deposit at least 20 bucks, then collect a cool free 20 on the house and start gambling on the news. So Bernie won New Hampshire. I mean, it's like. In the 80 percent at the time of this recording, yeah, that's in. Looked, yeah. um, predicted bets like saying 97 cents. Yes, that he's going to win. So he, Mayor Pete kept it close, but it looks like Bernie won. Nice. We'll say we'll call it at this time. Um, so Bernie that. won New Hampshire, as we predicted, uh, as most predicted, which also means if you had the bet, the Iowa winner and New Hampshire winner would not be the same person. That's probably also a winner if Iowa ever decides to officially name Mayor Pete the winner. But let's move on to new markets. First up, Club Iowa, chart did better than expected. Klobuchar did very well, um, for, and Warren did very bad, and Biden, and Biden. did very Whoa. bad. Yeah. Wow. VP, she's up. Klobuchar is up in that VP market. Yeah, like get in that. Yeah, called that. First up, I recommend picking Bernie, yes, or anyone besides him, no, in pretty much every single state. Mm-hmm. Every I mean, state. if you play that, you're going to hit statistically way better than 50%. Probably, probably 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, maybe yeah. 10 out of 10. Um, he's favored to win every single state right now, I'm predicted. Some barely, because like Minnesota has Klobuchar and some of the South states, Bloomberg's up there. Um, but Colorado's so, an absolute now that Bennett's gone. So. Yeah, so pick uh, Bernie pretty much in every state and for the primary, if you want to make some money. Primary's like 50 cents, you can double up there. Now, after all those uh, options, which is like 48, 47 more bets you can make. Now, uh, let's talk about one other new market, and it's a sad one. Hmm. How many tweets will Andrew Yang post from noon oh. February 11th until February 18th? Oh. And the Yang gang 
is out, y'all. Gang, gang. I think he's got to go under. I think he's going to go back gang, to his gang. family, take some time off. Oh, he's not tweeting for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So gang. he dropped out of the race on Tuesday night. Pat, how are you doing, man? That's yeah. that's Yang Gang. I'm Yang Gang right now, man. I'm just Yang Gang. It's good, good news for Bernie. <laughs> I think most of the Yang Gang is going to go support Bernie. Yeah, um, for these, goes back to those pick burning for the other states part. Um, yeah, Yang was tweeting like a maniac during the campaign. Uh, now that he's out, everyone thinks he will not be tweeting much, which is why the lowest option um, in that market of 159 or fewer tweets is trading at like 90 to 91 cents right now. Ah, damn. So everyone kind of has Wes's ideas. I actually might throw a bit of money on no and fade that at plus 1,000 because he might like thank a lot of people in the next few days. And let's face it, he's got some extra time on his hands. Yeah, so that could be a someone. surprise jackpot. Yeah. Uh, you know, just hit no on that for like, you know, 100 shares, 10 bucks. Huh. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I can see that. That's, that's I don't good. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Can we move on? Oh, it's over. Sorry oh, about it. Yeah, I mean, weird campaign, the URL. Yeah, right? Like he had good social media, terrible early state voting. It's those debates, huh? Uh, remember to make money easily <laughs> yeah, by gambling was, on the news. Go to www.predictit.org slash promo slash hard factor 20. Sign up, deposit at least 20, and get that free 20. Hey, real quick, I forgot my story. My last one was from Soda Pop Pineberg. Forgot to do the shout Soda out. Pop Pineberg. Soda yeah, Pop. Baby. Yeah, always submitting good ones. All right, uh, this last one submitted by Hard Factor Mark, but don't jump down my throat, guys. This one was also approved uh, for What the Fuck Wednesday by none other than the Hardo Hive himself, Big Ounce. One of our uh, favorite contributors, uh, Jack Bayless, and uh, the Wonton Don, who will be on tomorrow night. Uh, to, murder, to a murderer's row. Exactly. So, so there's yeah. approval uh, yeah. from, from the heart from the Hardo Hive on this one. And what do we have? F R B S again, really? <laughs> Fast radio bursts, aka space volcanoes, oh aka aliens pinging the Earth with death vibrations. A.K.A. Will's version of the coronavirus and yeah. Wes's version of pit bulls, right? I feel like, like you find a way to talk about aliens every chance you get. Yeah. Well, yeah, I do. I feel yeah, like you're writing accurate. some of these stories. You, good observation, because that was accurate, because I like to talk about FRBs and aliens. <laughs> so what's, what's new about this FRB, you might ask? I'm glad you asked. It repeats itself <laughs> four days in a row, over and over again, nonstop, four days in a row, then stops. Magically, twelve days silence. <laughs> where the fuck is this thing coming from? What like is the, the middle of nowhere? Like where? The is middle this? of nowhere, pinging the earth with a fast radio frequency wave, and then uh, oh, what does it do again? Repeats it again. Four what's days, the R twelve stand days for an FRB. Forever. Okay. Huh? What's that? What, what is the radio? R? Right? Yeah, is it radio? Fast, fast radio bursts. Radio bursts. Okay. Oh, yeah. It should be F R R B, I guess. Well, it's what it's doing Fucked is really it's, bad. It's it's scanning the earth for weaknesses, basically. It's aliens scanning us for weaknesses is what I think. Uh, just sending the death rays right at us. But but guys, the scientists, quote unquote scientists, in the article that Mark sent me, Shakes uh, in the armor. <laughs> that's exactly what they're looking for. Hey, but that article you sent me, the scientists in there, and I don't know if it was very reputable. They they as well as Big Ounce pointed out that this could be the orbital period of uh, the FRB, which would be about 16 days total. So, like, we would only see it for the four active days. Then but it it's would actually silence. always occurring. Right. And then it would reoccur. And yeah. Right. But Big Ounce did concede that, you know, it could also be aliens if it's not just the orbital period. So I'm well, sticking Big with Ounce that. Big Ounce said it. Yeah, Big Ounce said it. So I think I hold it to be true. And I, what I think we need to do is we need to bring in some heavy hitters for the Space Force. First up, I think we should get 50 Cent in there as a commander. Like, I, don't you guys feel like 50 Cent would, like, give a little bit of validity to what the Space Force is trying yes, to do? Yes, absolutely. No. Yes. Validity, yes. Yeah. No? <laughs> no. Who else? I mean, wh what, who else would you guys put in the Space Force? Maybe an astronaut. Maybe a general. Yeah. Like the well, Air of course, Force you'd have, like, an actual general, but he needs to be in charge of people is, who are going to give it juice, who are going to get the people what moving. What is 50 Cent doing, just pumping up the crowd? Yeah, he's going to get people caring about fighting aliens. Okay. So, so he's he's serving as, like, the Will Smith role from Independence Day? Right, except in real life, because 50, yeah. you, he's probably got a bigger gun arsenal. Yeah. Hmm. All so, right, who I, else you got? Okay. Do, do you I don't know. Anyone? Well, obviously, you need Randy Quaid in there. 
because he's going to have to shove it up there. Alien he's one of the greatest again. pilots of all time. You guys got anybody else you can put in the Space Force? I would put Gina Sky, who fell from that stripper pole earlier in the show. Tom Cruise. And bounced right back up. Tom and was Cruise just working. Ooh, Travolta needs to be yeah, in there, too. They already believe in aliens. Send Tom Cruise and Travolta up there. No one wow. wants Travolta's creepy ass yeah. on the space shuttle. My ex-girlfriend. We're Tom putting Cruise together th- quite a Tom team. Tom Cruise thinks he's uh, he does all of his own stunts and stuff. He thinks he probably could be... A space force commander so get his ass up also there. the japanese guy is going to fly to mars first and yeah, elon musk there. uh yeah yeah elon won't do shit he'll just make people well do shit. right he can be the guy on earth who if everything goes bad he, he like kills them with a button well i got a theory i think these yeah. frbs are going directly into the ocean which is where the aliens already are and they're just communicating right it could be communication aliens. with the underwater yeah. aliens yes. that's a valid mark you know what that's 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 yeah. a valid point so yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you just got to watch out. All right. Watch out out there uh, <clears throat> for the FRBs. Uh, and that's going to do it for Hard Factor today. <laughs> One word about merch before we close out. Uh, we've got the Hard Factor logo tees, both on sale at the Barstool store. One of them is half off the Shades tee. So hammer that if you want to look cool this year at your election when you're standing in your voting line, or your caucus, whatever you like to do. Rep Hard Factor. You'll look look amazing. Finally, I have crunched all of the year end numbers. And congrats to you, the Hardo Hive, for taking Hard Factor and the Barstool News Network to unprecedented heights. We did, we did okay in 2019, but especially near the end there, we started to do really good. And at January 2020 has been our best month of all time, and we're growing Ooh. faster every day. So thank the you hive. very much. Hive at uh, work, getting the honey. Yeah, the hive we're, is out there. We're targeting like 1.2 million downloads, I think, this this year. This quarter? quarter. This quarter. quarter. No, oh, this quarter. that's a quarter, bro. Tar- targeting, hey. like, we're going to get 10 million this year, buddy. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be up. way up there, yeah. way up there. So thank you, and please continue to keep the hive buzzing. Get out there and pollinate new listeners with compliments of Hard Factor and the Barstool News Network. Leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast app if you like the show. And most importantly, give yourself one more round of applause because we're doing big things in 2020. And then go have yourself a great fucking day.